Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. This video is all about basic automotive wiring. Now I know a lot of you absolutely hate automotive wiring. It can be confusing, trying, and quite frankly dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So a lot of people stay away from wiring. But what I'd like to do is share with you a couple tools that'll help make you more comfortable when you're dealing with automotive wiring, uh, understanding the wiring and troubleshooting, and hopefully fixing it yourself. That way you can save yourself some money. First, I have an update on this. This is the fixed OBD2 scanner. This uh, is a Bluetooth scanner that you leave plugged in your vehicle. You just leave it plugged in, it hooks up to your phone, and it provides you data on your car as you're driving, and it provides you updates on your phone so you know what needs to be fixed. When you buy one of these, the app comes free with checking engine diagnostics, issue severity, and maintenance alerts. And if you want to have that added security and you want to pay a monthly fee, you can get some support from the company. Uh, for the premium upgrade, you can talk to a mechanic 24-7. They have, I think they're up to four mechanics on the staff now. Uh, you can know your repair costs based on the trouble code or the error code. It'll tell you what needs to be changed and how much it might cost. It, it'll tell you your vehicle history. Uh, predict future car problems based on the uh, maintenance that's coming up or due, incident report history, and emissions pre-check. So if you don't know anybody who works on cars or don't have someone you can trust and go to when something is wrong with your car, this can be a real lifesaver. This can help you understand what's going on with your car. If the something comes on, the check engine light comes on, it'll tell you if the car is safe to drive and how severe it is. So I'll put a link to this product in the description of the video. Uh, along with a code to give you a discount and uh, get one for yourself because I, I like it, it works really well and uh, it's a good product, they stand by it and it's a great company. The other tool is this automotive electric system tester. Now I will also put a link to this product in the description of the video and this is a very handy tool if you're just starting out working on cars and want to understand electricity and it's it makes it safer than using like an ohm meter or something where you, that you could blow up uh, with the voltage from the battery uh, and the amperage ruining something. So it's a real handy tool if you're just starting out and if you're more advanced, there are some really advanced things that this can do and help with. But first, let's talk about basic automotive wiring and how you can use a tool like this to help you solve problems. Let's talk about some electrical basics before we get started. First, most vehicles are 12 volts DC based, 12 volts direct current, which means that the electricity flows in one direction versus AC or alternating current, which you have in your house. Uh, alternating current is a much different because the voltage switch is positive and negative. Direct current, positive is always positive and negative is always negative. So know, know the difference between AC and DC. Now depending on the make, model, and year of your car, you can have one of two systems or maybe a combination. Most older cars use something called a chassis ground. Okay, And there's a couple different... Uh, this is actually the symbol for earth ground, but chassis ground can be like that, but let's not get hung up on the detail of what, what ground symbol means. What basically mean, this basically means is that from the battery, and each system will have a 12 volt battery, the negative terminal comes off of here and goes to the either the frame of the car or the engine, or they're linked together somehow with a ground strap, but the body of the vehicle on a chassis ground system is always going to be negative, the negative charge, a zero point charge, no voltage in the chassis ground, right? So, reset for a second. That means that coming off your positive terminal, when you go through the fuse box, when you have a switch, and this switch, use the right color here, this switch can be open, and if this is a light, it will be off until you take the switch and close the switch. Now this could be a switch for your headlights, for your windshield wipers, brake switch, whatever it is. You're going to close the switch and you're going to have one wire that goes to the component, light, motor, relay, whatever, and it's going to light. The, the bulb itself or the motor, whatever it is, is going to have a socket or a wire that goes to the frame of the car and it's either going to be, this is actually earth ground or just a chassis ground. So the one wire coming in, the hot wire, feeds current here and then 
the negative side is all hooked to the chassis. The advantage to this system is if you want to add a component anywhere on the vehicle, all you have to do is run a hot wire from your fuse box to some sort of switch device to your component and you only need one wire. Versus the vehicles that have a floating ground. And the floating ground, you notice that there isn't a chassis ground here. Although chassis are grounded in these systems, the component needs two wires for it to operate. That's why it's a floating ground. It's not hooked to the chassis. In the, in the newer vehicles, you will see that most components have two wires going to them to make them operate, both positive and negative. And there are advantages to each one, but we're not going to get advanced here. We're talking about the basics. And when you go to work on your car for basic automotive electricity, looking at the component and seeing if it has one wire to make it run, or does it have two, will help you understand whether or not the component is a chassis ground or a floating ground. That's important to understand. Now, let's go look under the hood of a car and we can tell the difference. Now, if we look under the hood of the 65 Mustang, we can see we have the battery here and the battery has the minus or negative terminal and the plus or the positive, which is the red. And the chassis ground comes right off of the battery terminal here, the negative. This wire goes right over here and it goes all the way down and it's hooked up to the motor mount here. So that means that the engine is grounded right to there. In order to get this ground from the battery, or I mean um, from the motor, from the engine, get that to the body. In the back of the engine there's a grounding strap. And this grounding strap right here, you see that goes from the back of the engine where the starter is and it hooks right up to the body right there. So here's my ground. That's the ground coming from the battery to the engine and then the engine to the body of the car. So anything that's hooked up to any part of the car here, any part of the body, it's going to be hooked up to the negative side of the battery. So the whole car is a chassis ground. The power for the rest of the car comes off the positive side here it goes through a starter relay, and this is needed because you need a lot of current for the starter. That white red wire goes back to the starter so you can start the car. And then the power to go to the rest of the vehicle comes through this harness right here. This wiring harness right here, this wire right here, is hooked up to the positive side right to, directly to the battery terminal. So I got my positive coming here. It goes into the wiring harness, and this wiring harness goes all the way inside to the passenger compartment to the fuse box. Now this tool, I like it for many reasons. Number one, it's got a very long cord on it so you can reach a long way away from the battery. Okay, And it's very simple to use. You just hook the negative up to your battery, the positive up to the positive, red the positive, and the black to the negative. And if you'll notice, it has a switch on there, a negative and a positive, minus and plus. If I Take this toggle switch and rock it. There's a light here. You'll notice, see the light goes green when I go to the negative side. What I'm doing is, since I have positive and negative coming into the tool, I'm applying negative voltage here. When I push it towards the plus side, it gives me positive voltage, which makes it red. So I got green for negative and red for positive. It also has this extra wire on here, which is also hooked up to the negative side, which gives me a ground. So this is a ground. But Let's take a closer look at the battery. So the first thing we're going to check with this tool is polarity. How do we know, let's say we have a wire, we want to know if it's being fed with positive or negative voltage. And this is how you would test that. First, I'm going to take the tip of this and I'll put it right on the positive terminal of the battery. And I'll try and make sure you see that, but the red light goes on when I touch it to the positive. Okay? Now, if I push this to the positive side, I'm applying positive voltage and nothing will happen. Okay, nothing happens because I'm putting positive to positive. But you don't want to short something out. So if I switch it to the negative, it's a direct short, and it'll tell me that it's a direct short by giving me an indicator in the noise. So when I put a negative voltage to that, I'm direct shorting, it tells me it's a direct short. Just like if I turned it around and put it on the negative side, now that light turns green, right here the light's green. If I apply negative, Rocket to negative, nothing happens. But if I put it positive, voltage is reversed. So this tool can tell you what kind of voltage is coming through the wire and help you make sure that you don't put a direct negative to a positive together and short out your system. 
So let's use this tool to test some components. Again, remember that the positive and negative of this are hooked up to the battery, and we have this extra ground wire here, which hooks up to the ground. And if I touch these together, if I put my clip on there, you can see the, gr the green LED comes on. See, green LED. So I, get, I have a ground here. And I can use this to check continuity or to make sure that components are good. Now a fuse. If you have a fuse, you don't know if it's good or bad. Sometimes you can't see through it and you can't tell if it's good. You can just hook up the, the clip to one side of your fuse like that. And if I touch it with the other side with the tip, you can see my LED going on, the green LED. Like that. That means this fuse is good. If I touch it like that, the light didn't go on, it would mean the fuse is blown. Now I have a switch here. This is a regular push button switch. It's actually a horn button. But if I want to make sure the switch is working, I just hook up my ground lead to one side and I will hold, I actually push this through to the other side. And in order to make the switch work, so if I push the button, I should get the green light. So when I push the button, I'm pushing the button just like this. And the green light goes on. So I know that this switch is working properly. I can also use it to check lights. So let's say you have a headlight, and this would be a head headlight out of a late model car. These are very common. You, when you buy a new car, it'll have most likely have a light like this unless it's LED. And let's say you want to know if this light is good. So what again, coming into this, you have two wires coming into your light here, and it's going to be a black and a white, a black and a red, positive and negative. And you want to know is first of all we can test the light. And this is where we don't have a floating ground, which is where you have the positive and negative coming right into the component itself. So I'm going to clip my ground onto one side of the connector on the inside. And since it's ground, and this is still hooked up to the battery, if the light is good, when I touch this to the inside terminal, the other side, then there, and remember, I'm going to press, I'm going to press this towards the positive side to add positive voltage. The light should go on if it's good. So I'll touch it inside. And then I'll, well, I can, I, I can t push, push it towards the positive side and touch it and the light goes on. So I can test, test the light right like this and I can switch it on and off. If I hold it here, you see I'm pressing positive, I'm adi adding positive voltage, I'm completing the circuit and my light goes on. Now, having a tool like this is great when you're learning about your automotive electrical system. Just understanding the basics and having a tool like this, which only costs like 22, 23 bucks, can help you diagnose problems and help you in, when you're installing, let's say you're installing a radio or you're adding an accessory, this will help you identify the wiring in your car so you know where the hot wire is or the positive, what's the ground, uh, do you have continuity, is a switch working, whatever it is, this tool can really help. I'll put a link to this in the description of the video so if you want to buy one of these, uh, along with the OBD2 scanner, the fixed uh, ID thing, that really uh, works awesome too. So some basic tools in your shop. now. You may, not, you may not want to work on the electrical system of your car. I know some people who absolutely hate electrical work. I have a friend, Steve, in Florida. He would, he would rather fly me down to Florida to work on an electrical problem in his car than work on it himself. He absolutely hates electrical work. And you have to kind of like it. It's kind of a nerdy thing to work on electricity in your car. But once you learn and once you know what you're doing and you have tools like this, you can quickly diagnose and fix problems. This will also help you find a short in your car. That's an advanced. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. But tools like this really help. Not only help you find the problem and fix it, but help you do it safely. Safely meaning you're not going to short anything out and you're not going to ruin the electrical system in your car, which is really important. No one wants to do that. So links to both products in the description of the video. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. <music>